Well, this obviously isn't somewhere warm and sunny, is it? Light, look at the light on my face. Look how hard it is. Look at these shadows on my nose. This is the most appalling light for a soft subject like a human being, isn't it? It is really, really harsh and spiky. But that doesn't mean it's bad light. It just means you've got to think about what you're going to use it for. How about something harsh? And what could be more harsh than an airplane wreck? I'm out in Iceland with Thor again on our Iceland workshop and what a great opportunity to show you some stuff. Now I'm not suggesting you have to go to Iceland but this could be rocks, this could be a tree in the sun, in the park, whatever it is. I just want to have a little look. How can we exploit and use some very very hard and spiky light? Now natural wisdom would suggest that I'd go over here somewhere with a wide lens because we want the light coming in from the side and I'd shoot it from here and it's okay and you can see Thor's truck in the background and yeah yeah rah rah but use your first building block of photography if you've done my first if you've done my seven building blocks of photography think about that use your brain think okay don't just go crazy don't go rushing in to shoot things without thinking how would this look because the sun's up here and it's coming along the fuselage come and look the light is washing along the fuselage of the aircraft and you can see there's this kind of sheen, the shine going on but also look at these, can you see this little shadow in here? All these little holes, all these little textures, they've all got their own little tiny shadows. And those are creating textures along the fuselage of the aircraft. They're very small but they are what is going to make this shot. So I'm thinking what we should do you shoot this against the light just because it's hard light doesn't mean to say you can't go against it and just walking back here as I'm looking at it I can see how interesting this shot is becoming I mean, just walk around when you're shooting you know move around as you do it so Thor sorry I need to go back this way a little more we've got Thor on camera again viewers I reckon about here now we're using the light we also want to think about composition. What sort of composition do we want to use? I'd like to give it a bit of space. This is a wilderness. I know you can see there's tire tracks. Lots of people come here to look at it. It's a shame we don't have virgin snow, but we don't. So what sort of a shot am I thinking? I want to see the aircraft kind of lonely in its environment. So I'm going to use a shortish, widish lens. Don't be too worried about shooting against the light always use your lens hood it will help protect against flare but I'm going to say more about flare in a minute so we're in snow we know that snow makes things it, it confuses the camera makes the camera make things dark so what exposure are you going to want well I'm going to shoot it manually so we take our starting point by composing the picture we want and then having a look see what the camera tells me now the camera is telling me that I want to use where are we? I'm going to go with f16 because it's a good depth of field. The camera is telling me I want 125th of a second at f16 with an ISO of 100. Great starting point. Try it. You know, don't be afraid to experiment. So let's put the, cam the, 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 the plane down in the lower left sort of third, give it a bit of space. I like the sky above it. Now looking at my histogram, <laughs> I'd say it's pretty much perfect. So why is that perfect when we know that the, 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 the camera's light meter can be confused by the brightness of the snow? It's because we've got the darkness of the aircraft as well and the blueness of the sky. Always trust your histogram. Looking at this histogram, there is lots of data. It's to the right, it's up in the middle. We've got everything we need there to make this work. Now what would happen if the histogram was wrong? What would happen if it was too bright or too dark? Just adjust the exposure, change your shutter speed until you get it where, where it needs to be. So that's looking really great. Let's go in a little closer. Let's just try a slightly different composition. Let's just move in a bit. And I'm just going to extend the focal length slightly. So I've gone from 24 millimeters on a full frame to 35 millimeters on a full frame. Which has just brought it in a slightly more natural perspective and by placing the plane on the lower left it's kind of giving it more of a leading line into the shot 
Notice I haven't had to change the exposure. I'm using manual exposure. It's been set. The light hasn't changed. Nothing's changed. Now we can really think about what we're going to do with the picture. And that backlight coming up the fuselage is really interesting. See if we can exploit it some more by moving over to my right. Because as we come to the right, the light is coming more along the fuselage, which is adding to that highlight. Oh, I like it. Let's just focus on the plane. Line up our shot. Get the horizon level. Take it again. I think that's looking really cool. I really do like the way the light is coming up that fuselage. But here's another thing we can do. That is, how about using the light source, the sun itself, as a feature within the image. We're using the lighting as part of the picture. So what I'm going to do is look at the shadow here, see if we can put the sun just sneaking across the edge of the fuselage. So to do that, we're just going to find the place where that all lines up. I'm going to use a wide lens, 24 millimeters. Let's just sort of bend my knees, find the place, squinting into the sun. I like that. Focus on the plane. Let's just see where it goes. I'm going to put that off to the left like that. Check the histogram. Now this time straight into the sun, the histogram is a bit too far to the right. I need to reduce the exposure. I want to maximise what I can get from the sky. So I'm going to take that from 120th, 125th to a 200th of a second and then check again. So let's find the place where it works. And low again, get that sun just clipping over the edge of the top of the aircraft. There it is, about there. Let's just get her in focus. It's hard to focus, so you need to just be careful with this. That's about there. That's looking good. To my eyes out here in the bright, the image looks quite dark on the screen, but the histogram is telling me that I've got the data that I want. So we're not only shooting the image, we're also using the light source as part of the image. Light is a peculiar thing. We can use it for all sorts of stuff. We can also just include the sun in the shot. If I go to the left a little, I'm going to move back this time to give it more space. Walk around, look at things. See how things change the alignment as you move. Now I'm shooting with a wide lens, with the sun in the sky. I want to get the reflection on the water and the light coming down the aircraft. And we're making the aircraft really small. You can probably see that in the video camera. So don't be afraid to shoot into the light, as Thor is doing now. Now, can you see me, Thor? We've got a nod, but I'm guessing the background is very bright indeed. But there we go. So look, play with light. Don't be afraid to experiment. Shoot into the light. Play with your exposures and use the light itself creatively, as we did just then, by putting it across the edge of the fuselage of the aircraft. I'm going to go back in the warm. It's bloody freezing. Subscribe to our YouTube channel to be notified each time we upload one of our cool photography videos. Or for more great photo tips, workshops and training, come and see us at our website, photographycourses.biz.